Hello, this is Annie Scoops Lane, and this is part two of Front Page Friday. The first segment was about 15 minutes, so if you're just tuning into the scoop and you happen to be listening to this first, you can go ahead and uh, rewind and go back to the uh, YouTube video I posted as part one of Front Page Friday get caught up and to my scoop listeners who are on purpose tuning into part two I'll be picking up where I left off with the survivor story who um, described through her screening process and her safety plan and then later on down the road throughout the um, the family court process that she went through as she was separating and seeking a divorce from her batterer who at the time was her husband. So um, I was describing some of the things that were happening in her home that she shared with us as we were developing um, her plan to get out, stay out, and stay safe. Um, for herself, for her own well-being, and her little boys. So I'll just pick up, and again, these are random things, um, or in random order, I should say, of things that happened in their home. These things are horrific. They, again, could resonate with someone right here and now listening. So if any of these things are happening in your home, please call the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence and get a screening. The number's on the screen. It's 800-799-7233. If they're, a, praise God, not happening in your home and you've never experienced domestic violence and anyone in your family has not, please listen to The Daily Scoop. Do some more research on uh, getting educated about this topic um, so that you can prevent, you can help be part of the prevention efforts that we do here on The Scoop right in our community in Monroe County. So without further ado, I'll describe um, some more of the things that she revealed and then I'm going to go ahead and read that poem that she wrote and she shared with me recently and this is about a year into her recovery from abuse. So some of the other things that she described were happening is that he would come home yelling and swearing and banging things around and she just wouldn't know. It would come out of nowhere. So oftentimes she was on eggshells just right before he even got home. Um, he abused the dogs on a pretty regular basis. They had two small dogs and he would beat them in front of her and her child, throw uh, them, kick them, put them in their cage. And... Um, he would even get uh, angry if the baby was crying and he would scream and sometimes just grab the baby out of her arms and say it's your fault and um, that would of course scare the baby. Um, he would stand in front of the shower and uh, scream in front of her every morning holding the baby telling her to hurry up and, and to get out and to get ready that he needed to leave. Um, she described him as a, a racist and a bigot. Those were in her own words. Um, if he was angry or became enraged, uh, he would go into his room and uh, sometimes cock the guns. And um, they were loaded guns, and he would use those for intimidation and threats. He would also sometimes leave a loaded gun on top of the microwave um, for intimidation. He threatened to take the baby if she ever tried to leave and um, take off and that she would never see him or the baby again. So there were a lot of tactics that were used and um, during the screening process, as we do with many, many survivors, uh, these are the things that we uncover and then we help them with a safety plan. So I'm going to go ahead now and read the poem that she wrote. And again, this is about one year into her recovery. And um, uh, this is really helpful for survivors. They journal a lot, they write a lot, and those are some of the things that uh, the advocates will encourage them to do in their healing process. So it's not titled, but I'll go ahead and read it, and then we'll close the scoop for the day. Nowhere to hide in a dark, narrow alley. The stench from the can permeates my skin. 
The cracked light creates deep shadows of my body. This is my home. His words seethe and drip with hatred, spitting, sputtering at the hollow form in front of him, hovering over me with disgusting sneers. This is my home. A rat scuttles by. Hot breath leaves his nostrils, his face contorted. My shadow sinks against the brick wall. His eyes tell me I'm to blame. This is my home. I try to sweep peel back layers of filth. The rag smears the dirt onto the dumpster. This forms his impenetrable rage. No mercy. This is my home. The light went out. There are four brick walls now. I clutch my infant, my lips over his, sending my last breath into him with a mother's promise. This is not our home. So thanks for tuning into the Daily Scoop. We are going to close for today. And uh, as you know, today is Safety Plan Sunday, so I'm going to encourage you to call the number on your screen, the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, if you have a loved one or a friend uh, who may be going through this or uh, may need some continued counseling through a transition program. It's 800-799-7233, and that is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They never close for holidays. Uh, thanks for listening, and I uh, look forward to the next segment.